they certainly can. And well, the green flag will be about to fly for round number six of Monday Night Skippies, brought to you by Race Spot TV and Calm. Engines will rev. Benny Simonson on that front row there with Gareth Dorning. Green flag will fly. We're racing here at Interlagos. And it's a treacherous run towards turn one. And the center S is for the first time with a full field of cars. The entire front of your field for the top six cars there. Single file already for the run, but it's an early move by Tom Ward up the inside there of Halliburton, who lets him have it very sensibly. Two, three, four wide further back. That's not going to end too well for those guys, although they just about survive, surprisingly, for once. As everyone gets through in one piece, I think I'm actually shot, Connery. Yeah, but it looks like a very, very clean start for all of your drivers out there as they maybe three wide coming down uh, the uh, the uh, the retro aposta here battle at the front of the field or at least near the front of the field this is going to be robert plumley and andreas leach the four the 147 just getting past the uh, the 502 right there robert plumley has made up a couple of positions already in just a couple of corners so a good start from him will clark, clark williams look to make the move on andreas leach coming up into ferrador no he's just going to sit in line as we actually already have a six car breakaway at the front so you do, the first six cars really heading off there, and I think, well, that is one of the few times we've really seen a clean first run through the center S's in, a, uh, in any sort of race at this track, but there's still plenty about 12 more times past for us to be proven wrong. Yeah, and actually they've been really clean in the infield section, just as we say that, actually, we have got one car who's just decided to do a little bit of rally cross driving. Um, I believe that might be Joff Cox, actually, but for the most part, except for him, really clean start to this matter. Yes, it really was, and uh, surprisingly so, actually, which is probably saying less than I really should about these guys. These are some fantastic skippy drivers. A lot to say about the likes of Bill Fraser, who's dramatically improved the last couple of seasons. Same going, of course, for the likes of Andrew S. Leach, who's found some real legs, Connery, so far. That performance he's had in this season and the previous one have been phenomenal for him, a formerly mid-pack driver. And for those guys who sit at the back of the pack now, this is one of those times for them to remember, one day they'll be in the top ten. Yep, exactly. The likes of Andrew uh, of Andrew S. Leach as well, also up there. Gareth Thorne and Kane Halliburton. Uh, Rob Plumley also getting himself up there as well. As we just uh, saw a little bit of position, uh, well, almost position swap there coming down into the center S's. There's between Gareth Thorne and Tom Ward as these guys still line up coming down the retro Raposta. Uh, looking back through the field, though, it's uh, still a uh, relatively single file most of the way. There's a battle going on for what is going to be P number 22 between Ashley Blake Hood and Nick Sigley coming down the retro Raposta. So he has a challenge for the lead there with Gareth Dorning just overshooting it on Benny Simonson. But Tom Ward wasting no time already in moving his way up to second place through turn five on the way up towards Ferradura here. And it's going to be, was nearly there, three wide as Ken Halliburton gets past Dorning as well, moving himself up to the third spot here. Look a bit further back in that second grouping, Plumley making his way forwards there. He's currently up in about the sixth or seventh spot behind Bill Fraser there, fighting with Andrea Leach. Clark Williams also making his way forwards. Neil Bontemps moving his way up now into the top 10. A little bit down your order. We'll have a quick look at where Mark Mercer is. Oh, started in 15th, still in 15th. We perhaps expected a tiny bit more, but he could be a tad rusty there, Will. Yeah, and what we can do is actually go back to think about where Mark Mercer was when he left this series and the development actually that we've seen since then and you know these guys have really stepped up and i always see uk and ireland monday night skippies as one of the things they do in preparation for things like the world cup and actually the talent level has increased so much i would argue in the time that he's been away that's certainly something you could say is behind him matt cox one of the apex drivers was about to make a move there on him that's not matt cox actually i think that's uh Josh Tomlinson, it is. It's Josh Tomlinson there making that move on Mark Mercer up the inside for turn number one. There's a bit of a concertina happens just ahead of them there with Loins, Barrington and Bontemps. Bit of a slide there by Thompson. He gets his way through and makes it happen. Mercer might get a chance for a cutback, but not going to have this overspeed he needed. Car up ahead of him. That's Brian Loins there, the yellow and red as we look towards the race lead. Will has it there as it's once again a defensive line taken by Simonson fighting off Tom Ward. Gets it done, but a good overspeed here by Ward. Can he slot up the inside for five? He does. Will he clear him in time though for up towards uh, Ferradura? Simonson should have the inside line here. It will be nice and easy to defend for him as he runs through the fast right. 
Never an easy opportunity to pass around the outside of Feradora Connery as uh, he'll have to try and look for a dive in the breaking zone, backs off. With this close following, Connery, this is what we normally see when we talk about danger for Skip Barber engines. The difficulty cooling their engines off and it's running in packs like this that does it. Yeah, exactly. So your drivers have to be very, very careful of that oil temperatures. They get themselves uh, through the middle sector. On the run down towards uh, Magulio here for the front of your field, they're all going to stay single file. And then the second pack is going to be Steve Hefford heading up that second pack. And then Clark Williams and Neil Bontemps behind. And there's also a battle between Mark Mason and Brian Loins this time. And Loins not going to make the dive bomb coming down into Zhang Xiao. He's going to maybe look at it coming down into turn one instead. Certainly could do, of course, as we'll have a quick look back towards the leaders. Tom Ward will once again get a big run on Simonson and will go for his customary pass up towards turn number one. Has the inside line there on Simonson and will make it through very easily. Perhaps a little too easily. A very defensive line early on as he sweeps back across to take a normal racing line. But look at this. Gareth Dorning had a quick peek at Benny. Won't go for it. Benny follows Ward now with a very good early lift there as he goes down this S's. Not to get into the back of Ward. Gives him the best run off this sequence of S's, uh, Will. And look at that. Big overspeed for Benny. No problem. Back he goes. Yeah, and he'll weave himself back down to the inside in towards that fourth corner. What actually I was paying attention to, though, was how early Tom Ward got that pass done. He was way before the start finish line. And in a situation like this, Rachel, actually, that's the thing we need to be thinking about. Oh, well, sorry. Sorry, Will, three wide here with Hefford, who's uh, managed to get himself involved in this group here. With him, Bontemps, Thomason, and Mercer now getting involved in this group as well. Mercer proving he may not have the speed of some of the front guys at the moment, but my gosh, still has that racecraft we expect from him. He's been weaving that car through heavy traffic here towards the bottom end of the There's all contact there with one car. Thompson goes up the inside and contact with Mercer. Oh, big congestion there as they ran through turn number eight of the track. Of course, that is uh, the Laringina. I think I've just mispronounced that one. It sounds like laryngitis, but we'll, we'll leave it there for now. There's a 101 car there of Neil Bontemps. Just, well, no, Mercer came across on him, actually. Just talked about how good his racecraft was, and he hits, uh, hits Bontemps. Yep, exactly, and the uh, racing spot will be saying there's a car on your right-hand side there, and it didn't seem like Mark Mercer uh, really got the memo there that Neil Bontemps placed his car there, just punting him across uh, across uh, the corner there, and uh, actually he'll just uh, keep, uh, be on his way right now. Battle uh, go going on between Kane Halbert, and Halbert's actually going to head his way down towards Pitt Road. That's very, very strange indeed, and that was just Robert Plumley and Bill Fraser to head their way through. Does Kane Halbert have damage? Yes, he does, uh, especially to the rear wing and the front wing, so uh, not a very uh, good, uh, well, not a very healthy car there for Kane Albert, and has to head his way down pit road, take that fast repair. Should be a quick stop for him, though. Should be literally in, get that car swapped out and back out again. Formula E type pit stop for him as he gets going once again. It should come out somewhere down just back in your mid pack region here, about 15th, 16th place, actually. I think he's around the likes. No, he's actually behind them. He's down in the kind of bottom 20s, actually. He's coming down around Tim Adcock, 24th place there. Where will he slot out? right into this group of traffic here and it's already three wide there with Halliburton nearly four wide as all oh, nearly gets run into there by one of the yellow cars oh wow did you see I'd got go through the middle of that one um I don't quite know what to make of that one Connery because Tim Adcock um shot the gap <laughs> somewhat Speechless and quite rightly so there, Rachel. That was um, a very overly optimistic move. Uh, one of the most optimistic moves I've seen. Maybe his brake pedal somehow malfunctioned because it didn't seem like he slowed down at all uh, for that turn, making it four wide uh, coming down onto the end of the straight. Luckily, uh, there was only a little bit of contact between the cars there, but that could have been much, much uglier than it was. Yeah, I think, Will, at that particular moment, his pants also malfunctioned. I'm fine. I did six hours It's not yours. Yeah. <laughs> we'll move back to the race lead where Tom Ward is once again you know, dropped back behind here the car of Benny Simonson. Benny has made the pass, but Ward has now found himself in a position where he's not quite able to make that pass happen just as early. And this is where we talk about simulation for the end of the race and getting across that line in front. Where do you make the pass happen? And although Ward made a very late pass that time by, it wasn't early enough to get across the line. As we'll see Simonson get a great run again here through the S's and under cover the Sol. 
Down the retro post, a huge run for him, and he'll use it straight away, no question at this stage, but uh, very easily done. Here comes Gareth Dorning as well. Can he make his way through on Tom Ward? That could be a real buffer that Simmonson needs. Is he going to look, look up the inside? He goes for it. He'll hold with him. Nicely positioned by Dorning. Very optimistic, but measured move there as he won't get it done in the four and five corners. Up towards Feradora. Can he make something happen? Can he hold it at the outside? Or it looks like with the positioning, he'll drop back in line. Does just that, Connery. And it's still those same four cars. Bill Fraser has dropped back a tiny bit. He's behind Plumley now with Andreas Leach in that threesome behind our front group of four. Adcock holding on and waiting here. I think with the amount of passing we're seeing, could be something that happens perhaps in terms of engines. Benny has spent more time out front in clean air. Tom could be getting nervous. Yeah, exactly. And uh, Gareth Thorning and uh, Stuart Adcock could be a, a kind of nervous as well as they haven't spent as much time as Benny Ooh, Simpson problems. up front as behind Sorry, us. Seymour Connery. Harding. Problems. Back in the second group here with Brian Loyne, Simon Maltby, and I believe the car ahead of them was Luke Redgrave was one of the ones involved in this. He was. It was Redgrave and Bontemps there down through the section of track known as uh, Pinarino getting side by side and a bit of touching went on and uh, don't think anyone gave consent because someone ended up getting very loose and spinning off the racetrack that was I believe Bontemps in that situation it wasn't Bontemps actually it was actually uh, Harding so yes we'll get that one right eventually as we look for numbers furiously on the side of these cars that's him down and out of the course for now he actually had to go that vehicle towed back to pit road back to the front Simmonson ahead of Ward with Dorning and Adcock no change of course in that group Fraser's gotten back past Plumley. So show him up into the fifth spot. And Mark Mercer in eighth place here from qualifying in 15th. Weaving his way through this traffic, followed as well by Steve Hefford right on his rear wing. Blocked off there by Josh Thompson. Very aggressive as he tries to make room Ooh. for himself. This is, this is old school Skippy Racing here. They're poking and shoving and, well... This is more like touring car racing. I wouldn't try and pull that with Steve Hefford. He knows that a little too well. Yeah, exactly. And so Mark Mercer basically bump drafting uh, Josh Thompson all the way down the retro post. It's still going to be side by side, two cars deep coming into Ferradura. So Steve Hefford will put his car on the inside line, force Mark Mercer to hang it around the outside. Mark Mercer will have to give up the position there. Maybe try and dive down into the right hander. He will go for the move and he makes his stick there or does he a little bit of maybe wheel to wheel contact. But then the advantage switches to Steve Hefford and he will actually hold the position there. Meanwhile, there's James E. Barrington. Maybe he's looking for a move on Mark Mercer, will he sling one down the inside? No, he's going to be a little bit too far back. But this is actually fantastic fighting just inside your top 10. City is, and Will, I can imagine behind that helmet, there is a massive grin on both faces of Mark Mercer and Steve Hefford. Those two drivers absolutely loving this. It's respect. There is contact, but there is respect in that fight. At the point that he exited the curve of the soul, you could just see Mark Mercer just twitching his wheel as... They ended up having that contact, it's got blocked off, but all the way down that straightaway, and you're going to see exactly the same thing now as they head themselves down through the final corner towards the start and finish line. Mercy is literally alongside. There's not a lane between them, there's inches between them as they come down and towards one. They've both worked out exactly how much room they need to give as Hefford goes for a big slide on the inside, locks his brakes, and might lose some time there as uh, behind him, Mercer gets a good clean run through the S's here. We'll have a run down the Retta Aposta as they come out to cover the Sol. Will we see another bit of action? We did see some rather aggressive blocking from Josh Thompson recently. Hefford goes for a move. Thompson starts to drift out, but we'll hold it. Will it go three wide? Not quite, but they're both going to make a move on Thompson. Thompson to the inside. Hefford pushes wide. Mercer looks for the inside line. Will get something in there. Gets his nose alongside. And a big, big run there. Almost enough to get him all oh! through the gap, which barely existed. Mark Mercer slots his car through a gap, possibly just as long as the Skip Barber race car, in front of Steve Hefford. His eyes flash before his eye. Life flash before his eyes there as Josh Thompson gets pushed wide. Hefford will come through. Hefford now no nose code, I think, from that move by Mercer. I have never, Connery, seen a move that close somehow pay off.
That was an absolutely crazy move. No one in their right mind would have thought that that gap was exactly the, the uh, length of a skip barber cup. And Mark Mercer managed to fit his car in, albeit at the expense of Steve Heffert's nose kill. And that's how close it was to that instant being very, very ugly indeed for all drivers involved. And we've got to expect Steve Heffert to now drop a little bit back now because of that major aerodynamic uh, damage uh, to the front of this car. As we see Clark Williams go for the move side by side coming through the final corner. He does there, unfortunate for Steve Hefford in that one, but I think that might have been a bit of a glitch going on on that front for him because that was, looked just about clear enough, but my God, well, that was breathtaking racing. It's up oh, the inside goes Josh Thompson with barely enough room for a car, slapping his walls off Mark Mer wheels off Mark Mercer and slapping the wall of the pit lane. Josh Thompson just bungles it into the center S's there, leaving a line for Mark Mercer. He gets his car through there. It's too wide as they come to cover the soul. This is better than the fight for the lead of this motor race here on lap number nine of 13. This is a dogfight, Will. This is old school. This is old school skip barber racing where these guys have literally just taken their gloves off. I mean, they're freeway behind them. And one of those cars has absolutely nothing in terms of front aerodynamic grip, but he's still going on for it. That is that number 72 machine there of Steve Heffern. And look Ooh. at them. They're doing the same thing again on the way up. Look at that. Rachel, this is insane. This is brilliant, Will. And I'll tell you what, uh, Connery, the car behind this pack is Paul Thurston. He's had a few points finishes recently. He's managed to finish races. I can guarantee Paul is saying in his cockpit right now, stay behind this, do not get involved, do not get involved, do not get involved, because Paul wants to finish this race. And that pack ahead of him have no such aspirations. Yeah, unless uh, Paul Thurston wants to get his hands dirty and get involved in this fight, it may be advisable to just stay a little bit behind this one because it's a matter of millimeters between the, any two cars or any three cars at times. It's absolutely crazy. What trust in the other drivers uh, must you have? And the answer to that is going to be a, a lot to race like that as they head their way through Zhang Zhao for the ninth time. There's only a couple of laps to go here, and I think we've got more crazy racing to go as well. Sunny is, and Josh Thompson's going to make a move here on Mark Mercer as they climb up the hill towards start finish line. Going to look for the outside this time. Going to try and go round the outside towards one. Here comes Hefford, and not really doing too badly considering his feet are very cold right now. The car of, uh, I believe that is also uh, Barrington, going to get up there as well. Look at that! Look at how close <laughs> Hefford and Mercer are. Barrington to the outside, three wide. Through goes Mark Mercer. Thompson with the crossover. Beautiful move by Josh Thompson there. Has the inside line holds it fluidly bit of a slap there for mark mercer oh my gosh this is incredible racing here as the pack forms up paul thurston panics and backs off a little bit as up the inside goes hefford now three wide behind them gonna be nearly four no is it three wide again no room for a move there as they come down towards turn number four oh, oh, no. they go. oh my gosh mark mercer clark williams and josh thompson finally pay the price for that incredible racing as I, I'm struggling, I need to look at a replay of this one really quickly because they come in. Uh, I think Thompson turned across the nose of Mercer. Connery, I will. I, that's what I'm seeing. Yeah, I would say the same. I've seen the same. It's on um, slow mo replay there. You can just see that um, Mercer was turned into, and, but they were racing so closely, so well for so long. It's like, I, I always joke about Skip Barber being like a Talladega, but you've got to put the trust in the other drivers, but you also know that at points something just happens because these guys cannot run picture perfect like that lap after lap after that without making a slight mistake and that's all it was it certainly was and i can tell you what mark mercer will be happy with his return to monday night skippies that was phenomenal racing we had there for the majority of this race we haven't paid a blind bit of notice to the lead pack in fact we're going to do that now because they're making a pass here it's going to be three wide actually in the run towards turn number one for your leaders tom ward benny simonson Stuart Adcock getting involved in this one now as he's gotten past Gareth Dorning. And the fight is on here as we get into the late, late laps of this motor race. We've not been paying much attention, but frankly, Connery, they've not been doing anything interesting as they have been at the bottom end of your top 10. No, oh, exactly. It's fantastic fighting uh, uh, back through the field. And let's see if these guys can do the same. It's side by side coming into the left hander of the Zeta del Lago. Tom Ward will be on the inside. It will have to force Benny Simonson. And Benny Simonson actually, credit to him, he holds it around the outside here. But he's going to be losing the position. And Stuart Adcock's also going to challenge. Will we see three wide coming up to Faradoa? No. Stuart Adcock is just going to lift out of that one. Still side by side for the race lead, though. 
It looks like we're getting the action up here. We had at the back end of your top 10, Will, at this stage, because now Adcox decided to stop just riding in line, and he wants to get involved in this one. Two young guns and the old campaigner here, who's just made his way through on Tom Ward with the sneakiest, laziest pass I've seen this entire motor race, but he just happened to somehow be in second. Yeah, but the thing is, though, with Tom Ward, and I know him, he knows there's still two and a bit laps to go. He knows there's some traffic in the way that will just move out the way and they'll run down to Yon Sal right now. But Tom Ward doesn't need to be in second place right now. Actually, third place is a good thing for him. So he's not that frustrated just yet. But again, like we talked about earlier, before that battle picked off, Rachel, it now comes down to at what point do you make the move on that final lap of the motor race? Because I don't think in this situation, the driver in P2 will win the motor race coming to the line. That's yeah, an interesting assessment to make in this stage. And, well, Tom Ward wants to be in second right now. Is it going to go past the lap car there on the start-finish line? Benny Simpson with a little bit of a gap here over Ward and Adcock. But it's going to be a fairly sedate fashion into turn number one. This time by Simpson, Ward, Adcock, Dorning, Fraser, Leach, Plumley, Barrington with Hefford and Paul Thurston, your top number 10. Paul Thurston back in the top 10, Connery. That is huge for him. Once again, if he can finish here, that is a huge smile for him as he's now going to be going after Steve Hefford with his uh, breezy toes just up ahead there in that number 72 machine. The Castrol entry, which is uh, probably leaking some oil right about now. That's a bit embarrassing for the sponsors. Up front, though, look at this. Side by side there. It is Tom Ward for Friction Racing alongside the Apex machine of Benny Simmonson and the UK and iCar there of Stuart Adcock wedging his way into this fight. And three big, big dogs all want to bite at that same bone. Yep, they are. It's still going to be side by side between Stuart Adcock and Benny Simpson heading through Ferradura, coming into the right hander just after. Stuart Adcock still holding it, the uh, inside line. Now he's going to have to force it around the outside at the Pinarino. And Benny Simpson's still going to stick his car there. Still going to be side by side. But actually, Benny Simpson's just going to lift out of that one. Maybe he's going to go for the late dive coming down into here. But no, he's just going to back out of that one just for now. Gareth Dorning, you have to remember, he's at the back of this pack. Could play a factor coming into the final couple of laps, which we're actually about to go on to the final lap here white flag out next time by coming into Zhang Zhao now they certainly are on a good run here by Stuart Adcock on Tom Ward will this be a late charge by Adcock to take the lead of this motor race Benny Simmons is going to have a good run here but let's not forget it's always the leader who's the biggest victim in these draft offs down long straight to the skippies second place doesn't get quite the run on uh, sorry third doesn't get quite the run on second as second gets on first the big wall of air going to be a factor there. Look at this, three wide. Simonson between the wall and then Ward as Ward gets passed on both sides by Stuart Adcock and Benny Simonson. Adcock to the outside for turn one. Should have the advantage to the second part of the center S's, and he does. He clears them both. Stuart Adcock to the sharp end onto the final lap here at Intel Argos, and it's the run through Curva de Sol for the final time, Will. And this one is on. It is indeed as we go on board and have a look at Stuart Adcock. And you know what? Now he's got to play ultra defense. You've got yourself Tom Ward. You've got yourself Simonson. And look, he's lost one place. He's lost two places already. But I think he might have done that deliberately there, Rachel, as we've got two thirds of a lap to go. We certainly do. Climbing up towards Ferradura now, Connery. And it's going to be Simonson, Ward, Adcock, and then Gareth Dorning in fourth place. Ooh. Oh, a bit of a twitch there between Simonson and Ward as they make some slight contact. Second time, third time. Adcock could be in a prime spot here to take advantage of two dueling giants as they're going to go side by side now through the second part of that corner. Turn eight down into Pinarino. And it'll be Ward still ahead of Benny Simonson at this point. This is not going to end in too friendly a fashion. No, it isn't as they head their way into Biko Tapatu for the final time. And he has to be now uh, looking to get the run out of Zhang Xiao for the race towards the line. It's going to be a drag race, I suspect. I don't think Benny Simonson's going to sling one down the inside of Zhang Xiao. Neither is Stuart Adcock as he goes very, very deep on the brakes. It's going to be a drag race to the line through the whole of your front pack. It is, and Adcock messes it up. He runs wide. We'll lose that spot there to Gareth Dorning. Just ran too wide, trying to get the speed. They'll climb, though, up towards the start-finish line. Can Benny Simpson get the run here? Will this be race win number three for the Apex Racing UK driver as they'll come through the final sequence, fending off drivers left and right? And it will be Benny Simpson across the line. Benny Simpson, Tom Ward, Gareth Dorning in third. Adcock just misses out as Simpson detonates across the line. What a finish for that race. 
three wide across the line it was and it was the driver that was in p2 coming out the final corner ending up taking this race wing we knew it was possible from moves earlier on in this race but it wasn't a guarantee and bernie simpson managed to do it through the middle three wide he certainly did and will. What a fantastic race we've had today. We've got the rest of the cars just coming across the line now. It's a bit quieter further back in the pack, but my gosh, that was phenomenal racing. That is exactly what Monday Night Skippies always has been and always will be about there. We did have a little battle down outside your top 20 between Scott Malcolm and I believe that was Ashley Blake Hood. But Malcolm was able to keep hold of that. But again, it came down. I think Adcock lost that motor race down at Yon Sao because he just pushed himself too far wide. He put himself out of contention. Otherwise, I think we could have been four wide at the line there, Rachel. Absolutely. With how close it was, of course, there at the end, with how close Adcock was, even after his mistake, if he'd have gotten Yon Cao right, I think he would have been right in that one that was a phenomenal race and i do find it ironic now that in the race chat tom ward is saying damn benny are you planning to win all the races this season from the guy who won all the races the last couple of seasons mm, yeah that sounds uh yeah i'll leave that one alone but either way folks we'll be going to a very short ad break stay tuned we're gonna have some phenomenal post-race interviews coming up for you in just a few moments time so we'll see you on the flip side bye Get ready, going green. Green, green, green! Post race interviews and show here for Monday Night Skippies on Racebot TV and iRacing Live, brought to you, of course, by Calm. Once again, we're going to go straight to your post race results for this one. Before we get a chance to talk to two drivers at the moment we've had in today's race fifth place and ninth place, Robert Plumley and Paul Thurston. But first up, the results. Benny Simonson comes home with a cracking one there in first place today, narrowly beating out Tom Ward and Gareth Dorning in third place. Joe Adcock in fourth, Robert Plumley in fifth, Andrew S. Leach, James Barrington, Brian Loins, Paul Thurston and Steve Hefford, your top ten. Behind them, Nick Siggy, Neil Bontem, Simon Maltby, Luke Redgrave, Tim Adcock, recovering from his, uh, well, missile attack, finishes in 15th from 35th. Vittoria Zaldemachia, Chris Bassett, Matt Cox, Aiden Wenman and Scott Malcolm in 20th. Rest of those results on your screen. And whilst we look at those, we'll go straight to you, Robert Plumley. The 147 car comes home today in fifth place after qualifying in eighth place. That was busy up front. Yeah, fun, fun race. Um, had some incidents with um, Andrew and the other car around us. I forget who, who it was. But, um, good race, all in all. Kept it clean. You certainly did. You've been having some fantastic results so far this season. 
Last season you were kind of a solidly mid-pack car, but this time you've found a little something. What is it? Uh, just stay clear of Steve Hefford. That seems like a sound reasoning based on today's <laughs> race, but uh, I wouldn't put it all on him. Um, obviously, you have a big touring car driver. It's a little bit harder for uh, for him to realise he has suddenly no <laughs> wheel arches, but of course, uh, you made the transition no, I'm, I'm fairly well I'm to just skippers. Joking. Just joking, obviously, but yeah, I've, I think I've just put, in, put in a bit more time in into the skippy this season, so it's all good. Well, it's certainly showing. Congratulations uh, to you, Rob. Anybody you'd like to give a shout out to? Uh, just to my teammate uh, Matt Cox, he, I see he came down in 18th. I think he had a bit of incidents. I'm not sure what happened to you. I heard him talking about getting damage uh, mid race, so I don't know what happened. But we'll have to talk talk that one over. See what happened. Certainly did, of course. Well, thank you very much for joining us, Robert Plumley. Came home today in fifth place. Thank Next, you. we will go to well. I, I don't know how to say this, but once again, finishing not only in the points, but inside the top 10 this time, El Capitan himself, Paul Thurston. That's single figures this time. Uh, I know. Well, it's, it's a single digit. You've not seen that in about 40 years. <laughs> it's salty. <laughs> I won one of these ones, I'll have you know. You, of course, you weren't around then, you lot, basically. Oh, fly by night. Kill, yeah, football started with the premiership and all that. Only four years ago. <laughs> uh, no, um, <coughs> that was great fun. Uh, basically, I think last week, I think it was uh, the result was mostly down to um, uh, me pe keeping clean and other people um, hitting each other and, and falling off. Today, it was uh, I was really pleased because it was uh, more down to my actual racing. Um, and certainly at the end there, I mean, it could very easily have ended up like 12th, 13th. Uh, because I had Steve Hefford right, right on my tail, Nick Sigley uh, right on my tail. There was a little group battling with me mid-race. I don't know if you caught them. There was all six of us, Mark Mercer at the front of it. Um, and I caught them because they were battling so much. Uh, and then they were actually, you know, say they're holding me up, but they're, of course, part of the battle. It's all part of the, uh, the same thing. And, of course, the guys behind started catching us. Uh, and then coming into the last lap, uh, Steve was right on my tail. Um, and Brian was uh, just a little bit in front, but I knew if I came at the last corner, in touch with Brian, I should be able to hold, you know, keep the draft and hold uh, Steve off, and it worked like that. Um, I was lucky avoiding the crashes as well, um, but uh, I, I did actually uh, run an official race this week to try and um, get a bit of racecraft in, rather than just practice, uh, which is what I normally do. Um, I, I'd like to say it worked, but. Um, Rubens Barrichello's son took me out on the th on the second lap, and another guy took me out when I was uh, when I was recovering after that. So I only did about five laps. So it probably didn't have a great uh, a great impact on this. But maybe I just used all my bad luck up in that one. Uh, but yeah. Um. So wait a minute. How many races have we got this season? Is it another eight? I sh can I just win one? There's another six. Oh damn! I'll, I'll, I'll end up to. Th Sorry. Is this uh, Thunderbirds countdown? Um, it is, yes. Four. So, so in the last race of the season, I should, I should come. I might, I might hit the podium. Well, we will have our fingers crossed, Paul. Fantastic result yet again from you. Started today in 18th place and climbed half of your starting positions to ninth in the end. There, congratulations to you, Paul Thurston. Thank Next you very up, much. we have uh, your teammate Barry West, who started in 32nd and actually managed to make a spot here today. I don't think you crashed into anybody, Barry, but it was a pretty tough race. It was a, well, I didn't crash into anybody, no, but um, I did. Um, I did blow my engine in sunset going into the second lap. I was up to about 24th, 25th, something like that. I was doing quite well, keeping out of trouble. I'm watching the people fall off, and uh, I thought there's points coming here. And then um, I must have, because I couldn't hear my engine, I must have changed down one gear too much going into sunset. And, Pop the engine, but it still chugged along. So I managed to drive it back to the pits, leaving smoke everywhere around the track. Um, didn't cause any trouble, I hope, for nobody. But um, got back to the pits, and then, of course, I came out in 45th, I think, and uh, 20 seconds behind the next car. So it's quite a lonely race. And I caught, tried all race to catch somebody up. I was gaining a second a lap, and um, just as I got up to him, he made a mistake. <laughs> so that was my front out the window. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a pity really, but uh, anyway, I'm on holiday for three weeks now, so when I come back, I'm going to do much better. 
Well, hopefully you certainly will, because you seem to have a lot of fun in these races. It'd be nice to see you actually get some reward from this uh, for once. It's been a tough season so far, but hopefully you'll bounce back. Yes, yes. I should be in the points. 20th round by that is my pace, not doing any, any of the races in the week, just coming in on Monday and doing them. But uh, hopefully um, I can get some more races in and um, get out the grid a bit more. Oh, best luck to company. you, of course. Uh, yeah, best luck to you, Barry. Started today in Thanks. 32nd, came home 31st place. Well, we'll have some final comments quickly from Connery and Will before we go. Connery, that was, uh, that was bloody marvellous. Yep, that's one word for it, and it was absolutely brilliant to see uh, what is basically old Monday Night Skippy's backs with uh, the elbows out, the gloves off, and uh, I just want more of the same, please. Oh, absolutely, and uh, and Will, to you, it's been a while since you and me have commentated Monday Night Skippy's together, but to see some of those names on that track and to see the racing we saw today, it felt like no time at all had passed. Oh, we certainly do. Monday Night Skippy is now with added Mark Mercer. You heard it here first, folks. Well, don't forget, you can join us same time next week. We head to England, to Silverstone for round number seven. So catch us again, nine o'clock British summer time at the home of British Motorsports. I've been Rachel Whiteford. I've been joined by Conor Maddock and Will Vincent today. And don't forget, this is brought to you by Calm, the charity helping to prevent male suicide. Thanks for joining us, folks, and have a great evening.
line at some of America's most legendary dirt tracks, including Eldora and Williams Grove. iRacing is the premier online racing game featuring NASCAR, IndyCar, sports cars, and now World of Outlaws, the leading sanctioning body for dirt racing iRacing is easy to use and features a centralized ranking system to make sure you have the best experience at any skill level. With a massive inventory of high precision laser scan tracks and cars with an unmatched dedication to quality and detail, iRacing gives you the most authentic online racing experience available. Thanks to iRacing's dynamic track system developed specifically for dirt racing, tracks change over the course of a race, just like your favorite dirt track on a Friday or Saturday night. From a slick racing groove all the way up to the cushion, iRacing's dirt tracks deliver non-stop racing action. Partnered with the World of Outlaws, iRacing is your source for the most authentic dirt racing experience available, featuring four brand new tracks and 11 new cars, including street stocks. Legends cars, late models, NASCAR trucks, winged and non-winged sprint cars, with much more on the way. Join the dirt revolution on iRacing.com and start slinging mud today. iRacing.com is a sim racing game that combines a true-to-life racing experience with an online community of virtual racers from all over the globe. iRacing offers a multitude of officially licensed cars and tracks, laser scanned with millimeter accuracy. Their car models and mechanical systems are based on real-world physics and engineered in cooperation with manufacturers and race teams iRacing's web-based interface allows members to compare stats and test drive any combination of car and track instantly. Their skill license system ranges from rookie to pro, ensuring members are always pitted against those with similar skill sets. Members are able to sign up for a weekly race series, compete in time trials, host a private race with friends, and participate in racing leagues created and run by the community. With over 60,000 members, iRacing works in partnership with renowned motorsport organizations like SRO Motorsports Group to deliver virtual races based on the real-life Blancpain GT series. iRacing's Blancpain Endurance Series features team racing, giving members the ability to build a team and participate in races ranging from 3 hours to 24 hours. Additional partners include NASCAR, IMSA, V8 Supercars, IndyCar, allowing members to race in their very own 24 hours of Spa, Bathurst 1000, Daytona 500, and many more. iRacing.com, delivering the most authentic racing experience short of getting into a real race car.
Aussie driver search is excited to announce a brand new competition in 2017. We'll be holding a V8 Ute competition with the winner receiving a drive in the V8 Utes at the inaugural Newcastle Street Race. This will be the last time the V8 Utes will race in their traditional format before morphing into the new Super Ute category in 2018. With the overwhelming response and huge demand for Aussie driver search, we have decided to create this additional competition for those who missed out. Open to anyone, this competition will consist of a drive in a V8 Ute at our events in Queensland, New South Wales and Victoria. The top five from each qualifying round move into the finale to drive V8 Utes at Sydney Motorsport Park free of charge with the winner crowned on this day. Three time V8 Ute champion Royal Harris is the judge for this competition. Royal will also mentor the winner during the round at Newcastle. One person in the V8 Ute competition will also receive a wildcard entry into the final round of the pro competition and be in the running to win a full season in the 2018 Toyota 86 Racing Series. The entry fee is only $800 with limited spots available. Entries are open now. These spots will not last long. Get your entry in to avoid missing out. Hello everyone. Hello everyone, welcome to V8 Online's live coverage of the Aussie Driver Search official iRacing V8 Supercar Series here at Circuit Zolder tonight for round six of this series, Jay Kennedy, and alongside me tonight I have Jared Philsell in the booth with me. G'day Jared, how are you mate? Yeah, good mate. Yourself? Yeah, not too bad. I'm just trying to fix a couple of technical issues, but we've got qualifying underway at the moment, and field looks a little bit spread at the top, but in the middle it's nice and tight. Yeah, definitely. We've got Forzan on top at the moment by three tenths of a second over Mitch McLeod. And then, uh, yeah, it's pretty tight throughout the field from fourth back to 11th. Yeah, we've got about, what have we got, 28 drivers in the field tonight. A little bit of a, a depleted field with a few drivers on the back. Uh, looks like Forzan's definitely got the pace. Uh, saying that, Dane Warren has not set a lap time yet, so he I think he's it. Top right on cue. Yeah, that's good. Uh, good commentating there. <laughs> well done, well picked up. Yeah, relatively low soft tonight, only 2800, so championship points won't be too high. Um, but nonetheless, it should be a uh, good race amongst the top guys. In regards to the championship, it's been pretty tight at the top between Wayne Burke, Mitchell McLeod. And also Matt Stratford, the three guys at the moment who are fighting for this championship as it stands right now. But we've seen in the past drop weeks really come into play. Um, so, yeah, anything can and probably will happen in this championship. Yeah, Stratty's a miss tonight. I'm not sure whether this is a strategic drop round because he has a strong dislike for the track. I know I definitely would skip this one. It's not, not my favourite. It's not my personal favourite either. It's a very, very slick track. Um, very, very tough to get rip on. But uh, see with the, depending on the weather conditions, it can be enjoyable, but it's quite tough in the V8 Supercar for sure. One of the most superior goat tracks on Irising, I'd say. Uh, no passing whatsoever. Pretty tough in this car. Probably the first chicanes, the, the real big passing opportunity and into the hairpin, but... Even then, not all that easy to get a pass done. 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, big issues with uh, passing around here. Um, the chicanes are really tough, so expect a lot of slowdown penalties, maybe even a few disqualifications from incident limits because this track is very harsh on the uh, off-track limits. About 90 seconds left in qualifying. 26 drivers are currently put in a lap. Interesting that Corey Preston has not done a lap as of yet. Picked up a win in this series, but I don't even think he's out on track at the moment, so... Um, interesting that from that perspective that he's not punching in lap times right now. Yep, yeah, he's uh, off track both his laps. Um, just gone back and had a look, a bit of frustration after the line there, and he's written off the old Falcon into the wall before the start of the race. That means he'll start in 28th position. 27 cars have done laps. Interesting to see a few names that have returned after years away. Sam Collins out on track, who we used to see back in the series way back when. Out on track, having a run tonight. Mario Vlasic back out on track after a few weeks away as well. Yeah, that's a, that's a name that I haven't heard for quite some time. Um, should be interesting. He's car 11 in the field, so his I rating must still be fairly decent. So we'll uh, see how he goes. Not many guys left out on track. I'm pretty sure that the grid is set, so I'll run through the grid as it stands. Dane Warren will start from pole. Falls in on Arby in second. Mitchell, in Cloud, Mitchell McLeod in third. We've got Wayne Burke in fourth. Michael Talancic in fifth. Mullen, Mick Mullen in sixth position. Then we've got Daniel Poulton, Jason Quire, Riley Blythe, Adam Highland, Ryan Shelton, Greg Sharp, uh, Thomas McMillan, Brett Loxton, Daniel Williams, Thomas Hins, Jura Nakora, uh, Craig Jones, Mario Vlasic, Daniel Trim, Matt Morris, Zach Baker, uh, Wayne Taylor, Phil Jones, Will Dodd, Sean Thompson, Sam Collins, and Corey Preston, the only driver not to put in a lap. Entire field separated by 2.6 seconds. The pretty big spread, but that's to be expected with this track. Um, obviously, a few people not registering lap times on their first laps or not getting one in. For instance, as Corey, so look for him to come flying through the field, um, hopefully clean. Not quite sure what's happening with the stream. There's a few issues with it in regards to pixelation on some things, so we're not sure what's happening, but we'll try and fix it as we go. Uh, it's been working fine for the last couple of weeks, and all of a sudden it's starting to play up, which is the beauty of the internet. We're about to get underway for round six. Really looking forward to this one. It should be nice and close. Even though the times are a bit spread at the front, you'll see the race nice and close with the Good big, luck, long, everyone. Uh, big long straights. Yeah, big funnel into turn one, so hopefully uh, everyone remembers where the brake pedal is. That should be uh, interesting. We know what these guys are like, so there's a high chance that they will not remember that. Oh, well, we'll look forward, the viewers, for a spectacular crash. Uh, no safety cars, so that's unfortunate. But, no, nah, hopefully uh, get through turn one, two uh, cleanly. It's uh, it's going to be a bit of a struggle at the first chicane. I expect a lot of Constantinas. Uh, no tail contact. Um, everyone's going to have to be on their feet. Right, here we go. Revs are rising. And we are underway. Great jump by Dame Warren there. He's going to consolidate into turn one there. Daniel Trim got a really good jump in the middle of the field, and he's jumped about five or six spots into turn one. Yeah, big congestion back in the field at turn two here. It's going to be uh, this is the danger zone if you if you want to call it that. Oh, we've got oh, a bit of contact back in there. Yeah. Oh, Looks like he's climbed Mario the wheel. Vlasic, big contact. He was. Massive damage to his car. Managed to get through though. Riley Blythe side by side with uh, Michael Teliancic. That is. Yeah, here we go. This is where it's, this is where it's going to get interesting. Oh, uh, side wide. by side through the chicanes. Burke we've Teliancic. Got a, we've got a big late breaker down here. Oh, we got Corey involved in an incident at the chicane. He's been turned around. That's uh, a bit of a shame there. It looks the like classic classic Zolder. Uh, Constantina there. 
Thomas Hins has spun around further up the track. Oh, and he's just been collected head on. My apologies, uh, guys. Just having all sorts of technical issues with the screen not even coming up. We're going to replay that incident so that we can actually see what's happened. My apologies. Uh, last night we didn't broadcast because I was quite unwell and I'm still feeling the effects at the moment. So my apologies for things not being up to normal best standard. Yeah, it just looks like Corey's clipped the front end of Samuel Collins there yep. quite awkwardly. Trying to be the late of the last breakers and he's just caught uh, caught a few of them out. Now yeah, McLeod's got ahead of McMullen and El Nabi. So El Nabi, not a great jump at the start. McLeod's leading them away. Yeah, further back in that uh, replay there, Craig Jones actually come together with Matt Morris with a massive net code. Oh, look at the gap that Dane Warren's already pulled. It's out to two seconds already. That's a massive gap after after One two laps. laps. Looks oh, like he's saying there's going to slow down. Yeah, he's just got to slow down. That's uh, not optimal. Uh, hopefully, Mitch can. Uh, Take advantage of this. Looks like he's cleared it already. That's uh, good for Dane there. Now that McLeod's back in the tail of Warren, you may not let him go. Yeah, we've got a big fight up here. Uh, f top four all separated by nothing. So this should be great to watch. Hopefully uh, it's a race long battle, but we do have some pit stops. So that'll be uh, interesting for the undercut. Way well, back. The, uh, side by side with Riley Blythe into the final section. Final chicane. He yeah, gets the move done. That's a uh, good move there by Wayne. Well, then on Arby's done the fastest lap of the race. So he's right now behind uh, Marlon McMullen. He was a little bit off the pace in saying that right on cue. Michael Taliancic now does the fastest lap of the race. Now, looking around about 16 laps. As uh, the maximum stint length, so we'll have the pit window opening around about lap 10, closing around about lap 16. Yeah, 56 litres the tank's limited to tonight, so half a tank of fuel. So the cars will be almost on a quality spec trim, so they are very light and nimble, so that's always uh, good for the drivers. Um, just looking at Mike Taliancic, he's got some good pace here. Don't be surprised if he uh, rages onto the back of these guys if they uh, fight a little bit too hard. It was two, two and a bit seconds at the line. It's now down to about 1.9. So starting to close up. Definitely looking good for these PMS cars. With oh. uh, Burke, a big lock up. Riley Blythe's got good pace too. Sorry, Joe. No, all good. He looks like he's just trying to cling on to the back of Wayne Burke here, uh, pushing very, very hard, as you do. Um, need to keep, keep an eye on the off-track limits of these guys here. It's very, very easy to follow a car and get a slowdown or an off-track and it really hurts your race throughout. Definitely looks like Riley's got the pace of your car. Oh, he's going for goes. a move up the inside be quite tough to hold on here. Wayne could hold it around the outside. Dane Warren's yeah, just... done the fastest lap of the race now. Burke, yep, does pull pull away. He yeah, gets that move done quite easily on the outside there. Yeah, Dane's just gone and smashed the the uh, fastest lap of the race there. He's pulled away quite a, quite some distance on Mitch there. Three tenths last lap, so. He's uh, streaking away slowly. Nice and cool tracks. Definitely going to help these guys tonight in comparison to what we've seen throughout the series. Look at Blythe. He's right there on the tail of Burke now. Yeah, Blythe was actually the second quickest car on track last lap behind Burke. So everyone from Blythe onwards are very, very, very even on lap time. So look forward to them all uh, rearing up onto one another and big battle pack. Cloud looks like he's pulling away from McMullen as well now too, so yep. 
about seven tenths between McLeod and McMullen for second to third. El Nabi's still on his tail. On McMullen's tail, that is. Dame Warren punches out another faster slap of the race. Got great consistency in that car. To do oh, the Blythe. second. We had it all locked up there, did he? Yeah. Fucking those up the inside thought about it. Burke just chopped it off a little. Yeah, I think it's, it's probably good to be patient here behind Burke and hopefully Burke gets into a bit of a rhythm and gets back onto Mike. But um, yeah, if he definitely thinks he's faster, he's going to have to get the move done fairly early. You don't want to be stuck behind for too long. Oh, well, Narby's got decent pace too. Yeah, uh, stuck behind McMullen, as we were saying before. Very, very tough track to pass on, so uh, while he's got good pace, hitting around is not as easy as it would be at other circuits. Yeah, definitely. You pass up on the inside, and then the next corner you're on the outside, so you pretty much can't do much with it. So you have to be pretty assertive with your move and get right up there and make the move pretty, pretty cleanly. Um, saying that, it's not all that easy. Guys, now teammates as well, Marlon and El Nabi. Yeah, we've got a livery update for Marlon in the WP concreting uh, PMS car. This it happened if during the week. Yeah, I haven't seen anything publicly announced unless I've missed it. But definitely Just looks like these do. guys have got <laughs> definitely looks like these guys have got good pace. They're very consistent lap times between all all three PMS cars here. So. Wythe and Burke's definitely the battle to watch. It's 6th and 7th on track. They're actually starting to close up on Teleantic as well. Yeah, they've pulled him in. A tenth, two tenths last lap, so... Maybe just a little bit of a bad lap there from Mike. Um, good battle once they get onto it, but in saying that, you can catch them, but you can't pass them, so... Pretty easy to defend here. Riley's car really looks good through the chicanes. It looks really planted. Doesn't really react react badly to the curbs. So look for him to come through with the. He's got looks like he's got a really nice car balance at the moment. Eliancic possibly has absolutely destroyed his tyres. Five laps in. Yeah, he's looking a bit loose up ahead. So. Here we go, Wayne's having a look, up the inside, not quite, oh, oh. a little bit of contact, oh. a little bit of a bump and run there. Riley, oh, Riley. a little bit of rubbing up a bit, got Mike back up the inside, oh he's dived it in there, oh, oh that, was a bit, that was a bit of a blatant, uh, blatant punt there, that's uh, not what you want to see. A replay of that, because we sort of missed it with the camera angle we had replay and see exactly what happened there between Talijancic and Burke. Burke now is all the way back into 14th position. Yeah, I feel that's just a little bit of retaliation there. Uh, Wayne gave Mike a bit of a touch up, got him loose past him and Mike's come back to do the same but didn't quite work out the same but uh, it is what it is. They're going to get on with it now. I think it's one all. Hopefully there's no more retaliation. Big winner out of that's been Daniel Poulton, who's now ahead of Talijancic. There's actually a, a nice big pack of cars there. Poulton, Talijancic, Choir, Highland, and McMillan. Six through to tenth, separated by about one and a half seconds. Yeah, good battle pack here. I dare say Mike might have a bit of steering angle damage from that quite severe contact with Burke there. Uh, the angle of the hit would have been directly on the right front tyre, so the steering angle definitely would have been tweaked up a bit there. Definitely not optimal. Noticing on the timing, have a look at the gap between second and third now. It's closed up once again. Mullen right on the tail of McLeod once more. Yeah, last lap, Mitch pulled out about three to four tenths on Marlin, but it looks like it's closed up again this lap. Yep. So all the time that Mitch gained last lap, he's just lost it directly back that last lap. So this battle continues. If I were Marlon all fours then, I'd definitely be pitting as early as I could. 
Yep, we know that Mitch, Mitch will carry on as long as he can too, so... Yeah, risk to pit early is getting caught up in the traffic back in the field, but if you have uh, Joel Rule timing or any other software that will determine if you're going to come out in traffic or not, that's very, very handy for, for these types of races. You definitely don't want to get hindered as you come out of pit lane. There are Nicola and Sam Collins going side by side for the first two or three corners. They've come back in the line. Good to see Sam Collins back out on track. Been a, a very, very long time since we've seen him out racing. Got Adam Highland just going past Thomas McMillan. I believe Highland may have had a slowdown penalty. Yeah, it's good to see Sam back in the field. Uh, started 27th. Obviously quite a lot, long way off the pace, but he's picked up quite a few spots and he's in 19th now. Uh, picking his way through the field. Oh, McMullen has had a slowdown and El Nabi's now through. Or has he just let him through? Danger position. Not. Definitely doesn't look like a slowdown. He's no. just uh, conceded position there to Forzan. So hopefully uh, he thinks Forzan's got the quicker car and can uh, bring him up to Mitch. So maybe a bit of multi-21 team orders there I'm uh, not too sure car number one and two in the field so then there's a few yeah. times uh, where drivers will swap position to see if they can attack and if they can't get it done in a couple of laps then they'll swap back so never know what will happen in saying that straight away McMullen's not able to catch back up to El Narvi yeah that's always a risk you uh, get out of your own rhythm and you can't get back in it and you end up just losing out massively so but me personally I've never done it before just uh, head down run your own race don't need to worry about anyone else got uh, Mitch uh, two tenths quicker than uh, Dane last lap so I'm not sure if Dane's longevity of the tyres is uh, quite there but he definitely looks more consistent than Mitch currently um, but Mitch definitely looks like he's got some speed in that car still to see Mitch up towards the pointy end once again. Do bag him out for being a has-been, but he is a, quite a decent driver. Yeah, not sure how many laps practice he's done. Probably, uh... Three. Yeah, single digits. Okay. That's, uh, that's, that's great. Qualifying. <laughs> uh, arrive and drive specs always good fun. Uh, no expectations, so at least he's having fun. They pretty much matched each other last lap, so the yeah, interesting battle between these two if um, Mitch, Mitch, Mitch tries to undercut or, or vice Island. versa. Island with a big move up in the turn one. We'll go side get by side move done on Jason Kwai here. The hang around the outside. Not sure he'll be able to get it done. He's out way too wide there. Oh, he's trying to hold it, but he's on the outside for this next corner, so he's in the grass. <laughs> Not a, um, not a quick line out there in the grass. And saying it's going to um, hold here, and he might actually be able to get it done into the hairpin. He's just definitely going to command track position up here, so he needs to really throw it in and command that position. He looks like he's pulled out of it, or Jason's gone in oh. deep. Oh, great he racing here. Three wide. Yeah, Adam, Adam will get that get that move done pretty easily there. Greg McMillan's trying. Yeah, McMillan's trying to pick up the scraps here. Great definitely could have been. Uh, could have been a big, big shunt there. That was uh, quite interesting. Good respectful racing from these guys. Got Daniel Williams on the back of Ryan Shelton here. Uh, adopted Aussie, as some would say. <laughs> Running the Red Bull Shoey livery. Yeah, I don't have that one updated on my PC at the moment. Oh, he's just oh, been hit. Williams has just served him up. I oh. think Williams was actually looking at making the pit stop. That was a big hit. And in the process, he's just served. Shelton, we'll get a replay of that. Yeah, Shelton's saying thanks over the text chat. I'd say that'd be a very sarcastic <laughs> way of uh, saying thanks. <laughs> it definitely looks like Daniel's gone for the pit lane and uh, completely misjudged... Uh, the sheer speed of the difference between pitting and taking the normal line so that's unfortunate there Daniel probably have quite significant front end damage there and uh, 
Not sure if Ryan has the Holden Cruise yet, but um, it still looks okay. Massive uh, rear end damage there to the to the Holden Commodore. Al Nabi's right on McLeod's tail now. That battle is as intensified once more. Yeah, Marlins looks like he's just dropped off here. Doesn't quite have the longevity of the tyres. Um, these top three are very, very consistent with their lap times, but they aren't really reeling one another in. So this here will definitely help Dane if Forzan wants to have a go at Mitch. He must just drive away with it. <laughs> in the pits. Coming in to make his scheduled stop. That it was yeah, he's looking lap, so he's doing the reverse strategy. Yeah, he's looking for the undercut. So we've got Jason Quire and Ryan Shelton in the pits as well. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if Ryan's got some uh, optional damage from that that big hit there, but uh, don't think it would play too much of a handling factor on the car. The car should still be steering straight. Hopefully. Al Nabi doing a bit of the old weave trick down the back straight and McLeod very, very aggressive over the curb. Looks like he's been able yeah, he's, to do it okay. He's got a really bad exit. Forzan's got a run here. Uh, you can't really make a move there. Just looks like he's just mirror driving slightly. He's just pushing a little bit too hard. And Forzan's just matching his lines and it looks like he's got a little bit of an edge over him at the moment. While that's happened as well, a gap out, of, out the front to Dane Warren now, 3.6 seconds. So it is started yeah. to spread. Yeah, Dane would be absolutely loving this. Oh, El Nabi, big Yeah, he's locker. loose, loose, loose. Oh, he's giving oh. him a hit, and he's around. Oh, he's just locked up there. Forzan's disappeared off the screen. I wonder if Forzan's actually been disqualified. Could possibly be it. He's just, as soon as the contact was made, he's just disappeared, disappeared off the screen. Yeah. That's possibly a DQ. Marlon McMullen in the pits, so... That's that's a bit of a strange one, because that was very, very deep from... Was yeah, as soon as he's jumped on the brakes, he's pretty much just locked up the brakes straight away, so he's virtually a passenger there, and Mitch is left with nowhere to go at all, so that's unfortunate. No fault of Mitch's whatsoever. And definitely looks like Forzan's been disqualified of some sort. Uh, after 13 laps, you've surpassed 17 incidents, which is uh, not a very good strike rate. Looks like Marlon will pick up the pieces from that crash, though. He, he definitely will pass Mitch with the spin there and as he pits, so that'll be, that'll be a position made effectively. Gap out the front now, out to 12 seconds. McLeod definitely has a little bit of damage to the front of his car. On the second hit. Yeah, he's lost the left front guard there, so... They're saying he might have some type of steering damage, so that's that won't be helping. Here we go. Part two of this Shelton Williams situation is going on, so... It's as it was before the pit stops. Ryan Shelton holding off Daniel Williams. What surprise by that? I thought Daniel might have, uh, might have pipped him through the pits there. But, uh, quite an interesting one there. It looks like Ryan's got a really, really good run here on Thomas McMillan. Oh, he's getting blocked here. Oh, oh Ryan's loose. 